Okay, so in this question, we just have to integrate this particular expression. Uh, but integrating will take a lot of time in this case because we will have to use two, three different types of substitutions in this particular question. Uh, so to begin with, you should observe first thing that everything in the denominator is of degree four, right? So we have already seen one very standard case that when the degree of denominator, degree of each term in the denominator is two and the values are sine and cos, then the process is to divide by cos square in numerator and denominator or multiply by sec square in numerator and denominator, right? Since here the power is four, we will multiply and divide by sec to the power four X in numerator and denominator. Right. So let us see what happens after that. So if I multiply sec to the power four X in numerator and in denominator, I will get here tan to the power four X. Second term will become tan square X and third term will become one. So this is a much better expression, right? Now, one more substitution will help me in converting this trigonometric expression into algebraic expression, which will be easier to solve. Okay, so look at this thing very carefully. I am substituting tan x is equal to t. If I substitute tan x equal to t, I will get on differentiate, differentiating both sides, I will get sec square x dx is equal to dt. This will happen if I substitute tan x equal to t. So I already have sec to the power four. Let us give two secs to the dx value. So which on combining will be converted to dt. And what will happen to the remaining sec square value? The remaining sec square value can be written as one plus tan square. And one plus tan square is nothing but one plus t square. Right. So your numerator will now become one plus T square into DT. And what about the denominator? Denominator is very clear since tan X is equal to T, your denominator will become T to the power four plus T square plus one. Right. So now again, when you see this expression, there is another standard form, which you should remember. In this case, what we do is we first of all divide the complete expression by T square in numerator and denominator. Let us see how is that helping us. If I divide the numerator by t square, I will get one plus one upon t square. And when I divide denominator by t square, I will get t square plus one upon t square plus one. I have swapped few terms. So take care of that. Okay, so this is what we have. Now again, in this step, if I use one more substitution that let t plus one by t or it totally depends on the question. So here T minus one by T is helping us. If T minus one by T is let us say equal to U, then on differentiating this value, what do I get? I get one plus one upon T square DT. This value should be equal to DU. Now this value on the LHS is very good value because this is the complete numerator of our integral. Right. So if I use this kind of substitution, everything in terms of u will be written as integral du and nothing else. Everything is equal to du and denominator. First of all, you need to see that one t square plus one upon t square. T square plus one upon t square can be written as t minus one upon t whole square but then we are getting minus two extra. So let us add two also, right? So this is the value of T square plus one upon T square, but T minus one by T is nothing but U. So basically in terms of U, T square plus one by T square is U square plus two, but we also have one extra one here. So overall your denominator looks like U square plus three. Now this is a very easy integral. DU upon U square, plus three is what? In terms of tan inverse, one upon root three, tan inverse of u by root three. This is our answer, but our answer should be in terms of x and not in terms of u. So let us substitute u. 
so you will be substituted substituted as t minus 1 by t but still that is not x so then we will substitute tan x in terms of t which will give us our final answer okay so something like this will happen our answer right now is 1 by 3 1 by root 3 tan inverse of u upon root 3 then when I substitute back value of u it will become tan inverse of t minus 1 upon t upon root 3 and then when I further substitute value of t as tan x I will get tan x minus 1 upon tan x upon root 3 which can be written as 1 by root 3 tan inverse of tan square x minus 1 upon root 3 tan x and since we are doing indefinite integration in every step you can just add some arbitrary constant so if you add arbitrary constants everywhere your arbitrary constant will reflect in the last step also this is the final integral